Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of On the Mic with Mike. I am your host, Mike Larkin, and joining me today is Sessions Wrestler, the one, the only, Miss Emma Switch. Emma, it's a pleasure and a privilege. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, yes, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. First and foremost, for those who have not seen Emma's work, she does an insatiable job as a Sessions wrestler, doing a lot of work with fetish modeling and her clips for sales stores absolutely through the roof. So I got to say the content that you put out there for a lot of people is really, really exceptional. And it's really great to see you just continue to thrive and strive. Oh, thanks. That's, that's great to hear. Yeah. Now for you, uh, I mean, Sessions wrestling is probably one of the most amazing and probably one of the most unique fields and art forms that there is out there a lot of intergender wrestling mixed wrestling and just a lot of lifting carries and different preferences that we're going to get into but for you emma what really gravitated you towards that field of sessions wrestling and how did you come into that world uh well actually i started out in bdsm uh working as a switch hence the name mm-hmm. um that was in 2005 yeah 2005 already and then um, later on, like I think around 2010 or 2009, uh, because I'm muscular, people asked like for wrestling. Um, at first I thought it was a bit strange to hear that from my client, do you want to wrestle? I mean, it was a bit odd. But um, yeah, I didn't know that there was a scene at that point, but it's like my clients that pointed it out to me. And then I started to train jujitsu, and um, yeah. So then I started to um, travel and make videos and... But yeah, I started like as a first as a switch in BDSM. And after that, I had my own dungeon as a dominatrix. And then um, I moved to Romania. And then I was um, I had to rely on travel because you can't earn money in Romania. So then I was just doing uh, session wrestling only, actually. Yeah. But what's interesting about that, too, is first and foremost, you're applying different crafts here, different subsets and genres. I mean, from hedonism and freaking what you're doing with the dominatrix side of things, there's a lot of really to encompass there because hence the name, like you mentioned, switched. There's a lot of people that really like that type of session. They like that type of lifestyle where you get to really live that fulfilled fantasy, if you will, from the dominatrix side of things with the whips and everything that goes into it. So you're really at the end of the day encountering from that aspect, someone's fantasy and really making someone, you know, enjoy you have to have an enjoyable experience whether it be sessions in general so you're really making your clientele feel welcome then just you know overall fun right yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's for everybody something yeah uh these days uh i'm not doing much like traditional uh bdsm anymore although like you can book me like for bondage or like for yeah just for whips or like a no play or whatever but since like um it's not very legal here in america i'm a bit um yeah no, I get it. And first of all, I like that the fact that I'm going to put this out there as, as a fellow as American here. It's one of those things, too, where I mean, I've come across this in my 30 years living on this planet that we call Earth. We have a lot of people, unfortunately, that have the ignorant mindset and judge for what people are into with different preferences. But the way I look at it is like this and why I love women like yourself and women as far as the field goes, if you will. It's one of those things where a lot of us get to, as the term has been coined, you know, let our freak fly, but also at the same time, it shows our uniqueness, so to speak. And because there's a lot of people out there that are very much into preferences. And I think there's a lot more people in this day and age being 2022 are very much more open-minded and they want to explore and expand their horizons. Yeah, uh, hopefully, because I think it's healthy. Yeah, it's healthy to know what you want and yeah, to explore things and to know your sexuality properly. And I got it. Well, that encompasses, right, and that encompasses you, Em, and I got to put this out there. From looking at your imagery and looking at your work, you show a lot of swag and you show a lot of confidence. You really also showcase your abs, and that is something that's very beautiful and very, I'm going to say, desirable and admirable from your imagery and in your overall being. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I wish I was bigger. <laughs> yes, It's always frustrating to see myself, honestly. Um, yeah. I mean, I look at it from a stance too as well. When you look at yourself, Emma, I mean, the abs thing, and I mean, muscle worship is a big part of sessions wrestling and what a lot of clientele likes. I mean, Mm -hmm. when you look upon the muscles upon muscles upon muscles, and I'm going to say right now, people like myself wish that we could have those abs that you have, my goodness gracious. And that's the overall dedication and passion that you put into your craft. So there's something that's very desirable from looking at one's abs and muscle worship to the overall discipline, whether it be bodybuilding or the fitness side of things that really showcases why a lot of us men like a lot of strong women like yourself and really gravitate towards said field. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, I think more, more men are into that than uh, they would show publicly. 
And this, yeah, I don't think men, much men tell their friends that they like uh, muscular women. I mean, maybe it's changing these days a bit because it's, um, but it used to be like that, that it was more hidden. I mean, as, we're th- as I'm thinking about it now, as you brought up a great point here, it's one of those things where Madonna, to make a pop culture reference back in the 90s, had a song, My Baby's Got a Secret. Well, sometimes the secret needs to be let out because, I mean, as a lot of us guys, we like to like kind of hide it to ourselves that we like stuff like that because we are afraid of judgment and we're afraid of what people are going to say. But also at the end of the day, man, it's like I see it now and I've seen it in many different states and I've seen it in many different facets along the world. Like we were talking about the open mindedness thing. There's some guys that just want to go do it. And if you judge me, fine. They, if they don't, they don't care. Like there are some gentlemen that enjoy pegging. If you do yeah. pegging, boom, there's so many different things for everything, whether it be foot mm-hmm. foot fetish and stuff like that. Like you don't realize not just for clips for sale and the amount of clips that it sells and it accumulates for money wise but it's stuff that a lot of people long for and you need to have that longing and at the end of the day it sounds very cliche but it's true you have to find that happiness and that balance yeah of course yeah yeah nobody gets uh, happy if you're just doing it for what um uh let's say like you're into muscular women but all your friends like like blonde tiny bimbos and then um you're going for that to please them doesn't make anybody happy in the end, you just have to follow your own desires. Indeed, I mean, I mean, unfortunately, and we're all uh, we all have our stuff that we have about ourselves, that our insecurities, or we go through a lot of stuff. We all struggle, hence mental health, and how that's becoming a phenomenon, and rightfully so, because a lot of us need to get our balances and get ourselves in check, and really just you know really showcase our confidence and our strengths as we all are as beings. But you, I have to say this as well, because I've seen a lot of your lift and carry stuff as well. I mean, you've done some work with VV Lane. You've done some work with Candy Legs. And that I have to put over because that's a lot of great content. And that's two strong women just gunning it out. I have to say, I got to give you props on those clips. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have a lot of fun with working with Candy. Like she's, she's really great. And VV is also really great. Like she's a really smart wrestler. And yeah. But with Candy, I've been working a lot together lately, and we always have a lot of fun. Yeah, so I've had you have an interview with her too, right? Right. Yes, I've had, yeah. had the pleasure of having her on the show. And the thing with Candy Legs as well, and I think you can attest to this, and I'm for those who work with Candy, such a vibrant and beautiful personality, and it's just yeah. she's a lot of fun. Like she has an mm-hmm. amazing spirit. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, she's very positive and uplifting, and yeah. And I think for yourself, as we talk about powerful and uplifting here, Miss Emma Switch, I have to say, I think you in your own right, encompassing your being, you have that ability with so many great women getting into sessions and really over many different endeavors and facets of life. I think you have that empowering role where a woman can look at your image and say, wow, you know, from a stance of your internal and external beauty and everything that you possess, that's got to make you feel good just to see a lot of empowering nature with your images and people that maybe can come upon yourself and really be that inspiration as we all are in this life. That's so that that's that means a lot to me. I had it sometimes pointed out by people who who reach out and say that they admire me and that it meant a lot in their um, personal life, what I'm doing. And yeah, it's it's nice to hear that in the end of the day, it has some meaning. And for you, what do you think? No, I was going to say for, for, for only for you, like you get to travel the world. And I think the travel part of it ever comes to like sessions and just in general, like you travel like from Europe to the States, like the travel is also worth it because you get to meet new faces, new people and clientele. And there's a lot of great events that really come with session girls. So I got to say the travel must be great for you yourself. Yeah, I really enjoy traveling. Like I, I really, really like it. Yeah. Just to to have the peace of being alone and um yeah, and then meeting new people, of course. And because you have like sessioners and clients and regulars and friends in every country, and it's really nice to to uh, revisit and to meet them again. So tomorrow I'm going to Europe. It's been two and a half years ago that I've been touring Europe with um, the pandemic and everything. Uh, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to see everybody again. Now I'm going to say this as well from, for you, like when you're in the States and I'm going to ask you from the American side of things as the, mm-hmm. as the international talent coming to the States and vice versa, because there's a lot of us Americans that do the international tours, but God dang, man, what are some of your favorite spots that like that you've traveled? I know you've done some work in Chi town, Chicago, but what are some of your places favorite to travel in the States? Um, I always like DC because I have a lot of regulars there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's always nice to go there and they have good public transport. That's also really important. Um, yeah, because I have no driving license, so I don't rent cars or things like this. And I don't do smartphones. So calling an Uber, um, yeah, that's also not really possible. So yeah, good public transport. I really enjoy. So DC is nice. Um, 
I like San Francisco a lot as a city. I've been there 10 years ago for one month. Uh, more than 10 years ago, I think 12 years ago or something. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, for sessions, it's not such a good destination for me. Um, yeah, New York is good for filming and collaborations. Um, yeah, what else? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get you. And I mean, I look at it from a stance too, as well. Like when it comes to travel, there's different cultures, there's different places. And the other thing, I mean, I'll add to that, like you mentioned when it comes to COVID and everything, like COVID messed up everything for a lot of people. And I think the only take I can make out of it, that was kind of a plus, it gave our creative juices flowing. So a lot of people can fold under the pressure, whether it be staying at home, you know, cause you can't do anything. You're limited in what you can do, but also at the same time, if you're at the house, you can stay positively proactive and really get the creative juices flowing, whether it be workouts and stuff of what you need to do you can yeah. get, you can get creative so i wanted to ask you because you mentioned not being there since doggone covid how was yeah. how was that transfer for you from the covid side of things to where we were as a country and everything going on with the pandemic uh, well i moved just like during the pandemic actually like i got married before the pandemic and then i couldn't move to america to my husband because of that mm-hmm. Um, the pandemic was very hard because I was in Romania and I can't earn any money there. So, and I couldn't travel. So I stuck there by myself, uh, living on my, um, savings mm-hmm. basically. And on yeah, very little that I earned on our biceps scam. Uh, so that was very hard, but afterwards, then, uh, I got my visa I, and then I could basically tour again in America because the borders were open here. It's not like, like Europe was. Um, so yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's one of those things, too, as well. And I think what's great about the session side of things and what Jennifer Thomas does and the amazing work she does with the site and just her overall events, the empowering side of things that we mentioned really goes a long way with a lot of you women, but also at the same time, I mean, you want to have something because I mean, with women in general, unfortunately, us men, not all of us, I don't consider myself one of these make ignorant mm-hmm. comments and say a lot of, I'll put it bluntly, a lot of bullshit, but also at the end of the day, I think when you find those right clientele of men that really have the respect and the admiration, I'm going to say the desire for it, because if you look at sessions as a whole, it's women like yourself and it's women like Jenny and many amazing talents that provide that systematic dissection joint manipulation. Joint manip- with the craft but there's that sex appeal side of things and i mean you have to have that sex appeal which you and all those women enjoy so i think it's a nice balance and a variety for the clientele to encompass yeah yeah i assume so yeah and you look at it from a stance too as well. And what I look from Sessions Wrestling and I look at women like yourself and I look for different content from you because the content never stops. We're in the day and age of the content creators, if you will, and the mm-hmm. content creation, yeah. right? With what you do and like we mentioned, Candy Legs and VV Lane, the content never stops and you really get to showcase a lot of different stuff with men, with women. So the content is great on all aspects for a lot of people to enjoy. So you're really putting that out there and it's something that's really big in today's market. Yeah, I wish I could film more. Like uh, when I was living in Belgium, I had my own studio, my own dungeon. Mm-hmm. And um, I also had a matted space. So I could, and I had my, I had a professional cameraman um, and things like that. So I could bring out great content in like, let's say 2015 and things like this. Um, yeah, so that declined because I don't have my own space. I have to rely on hotel rooms with bad lighting and camera people I don't necessarily know in advance. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's been difficult, but I hope by December or something, or by the winter somewhere to have my own space to film in and my own lights and to make some contact with people that are real cameramen and, um, things like this so that the quality can go up again. Yeah. And to follow up with that, because you said it so eloquently there, Miss Switch, one of those things that's really a lot of people don't realize is just like the behind the scenes factor of getting that image of getting that shot in the lighting. Like a lot of people don't realize like the behind the scenes of the work that really goes into it and the amount of shooting and the amount of really getting that precision into your work, like the behind the scenes and stuff is amazing going into these films. Okay, well, I'm not that technical (laughs) myself. Uh, So, yeah. Uh, it's most like uh, I also don't do much editing like uh, so it's like yeah what you see is what you get basically um, <laughs> yeah but for some people maybe more yeah hey I appreciate the bluntness because a lot of people are like that no I appreciate that but I think anything that you do whether it's what you see is what you get or what happened it's, it's the little nuances right that really go into it right yeah 
<laughs> now, I have also add to this as well. And I mean, when we look at the future of Sessions Wrestling and the future of what you have going on, I think the future is bright because you see a lot of new girls coming in. I think it's amazing with different physiques, women's shapes mm-hmm. and sizes. Also, you can incorporate that to modeling because modeling in that field where we get to see different of all different shapes and sizes from modeling to plus size modeling. We're really seeing a growth in the evolution revolution of how women are really pre presented into the forefront and really that we get to see women being you know represented in general it's amazing to see the growth of how we're seeing women in all different facets of life yeah that's really nice like in the session scene i think like the variety of of girls with all kinds of body types and they all have their own audience and everybody's appreciated and just for everybody an audience and that's really nice to see that everybody can just be um what they want to be or how they want to look and they will have their audience you know I got to say, for someone who's used that name for many, many years, you really have showcased and applied your craft. And with the utmost sincerity and respect to you, I can't wait to see what the future holds for you, Ms. Emma Switch. Thank you. You're very welcome. And I'm going to say this right now because I do have a couple final questions I want to say to you. And I'm going to say this right now. The overture is here. Anytime you want to come back on for a round two, you are more than welcome. I love to have you back. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. So as someone who's been doing the damn thing for numerous years, has been really incorporating and applying her craft, and as someone who's an empowering female in her own right with her beauty, strength, and dominance, what can we expect and from you going forward? And what advice would you give to the new girls coming into the sessions world that want to really pursue a career? What advice would you give them to showcase that experience that you've had? And what would be your overall sentiments to them? Uh, what would my advice be? Um... Oh. I don't know. Um, be fair with people, uh, like when it comes to deposits and things like that, but also ask for deposit because, um, yeah, for your own safety. Um, but I think everybody's kind of doing that these days. You know? uh, what else? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, sure. You know, the follow-up is that what, 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 what can we expect for you going on in the future, Ms. Emma Switch? Uh, well, I will have my own room. Um, to work from, Uh, what else? Well, I hope to compete next year again. That would also be good. Um, What else? I don't know, more collaborations since I just made contacts. I went to the Session Girls event. I spoke with lots of girls. I had a great occasion to talk with them in person. And it's always better uh, to talk in person to people, you know, like for future collabs. Uh, So yeah, I hope to to work together with uh, these wrestlers. I got to say this, my friend, you are a true pro, and it's really an absolute pleasure to be working with you this evening. And before we do close this out, please promote the Twitter, your Sessions Girls profile, wherever people can follow you on all forms of social media, your clip store. Let everybody know where we can follow you, Emma. Okay, so uh, how do I do that? (laughs) Whether it just be Twitter or just whatever you want to promote where people can follow you on forms of social media. Okay, yeah, you can find me on Twitter. That's actually the only one I, I have, the only social media I use. I will say this, the links to Emma Switch on Twitter will be in the description below this show. Below this show. And I got to say, I commend you on that because number one, there's too many forms of social media. Number two, you get cluttered with it. And number three, not everything is about social media. And I'm going to put that out there because while it's good, it could also be a detriment. And we all need to just actually live our lives and not on the computer. Somewhere. Exactly, exactly. It's way too much. Uh, if I didn't have the job, I wouldn't be on social media at all. But yeah, you need it. You can't be without Hey, and I, I know I probably shouldn't be saying this, but as a podcaster, and I love what I do because I get to meet so many amazing women like yourself, Miss Switch. But I'm going to say right now, if, it were, if I didn't do podcasting, I would not be on social media. And, and I don't mean to put it like that, but it's yeah. also very true. But I think also as you get older, because like you see like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and of course now TikTok is becoming the phase and the craze, you start mm-hmm. to realize like, you know what? It was cool, like maybe like 10 years ago, but as you get older, it's like, this is ridiculous. I could just go outside and talk to people. We don't need. Yeah, it's such a bombardment, bombardment of images and advertisements. And uh, yeah, you just have to go out and eat and meet people and see nature and and live. Exactly. And you see the dogs are in agreement. The social media sucks. So yes. yes. <laughs> so, folks, this will conclude another edition of On the Mic with Mike. I hope you enjoyed my previous interviews with Candy Legs and the talents from the Sessions Wrestling World. And as I always end this show, the beauty, strength, and dominance adamants and sentiments, beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are, and Miss Emma's switch, I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. 
Thank you. Thank you as well. And enjoy the party with your mother. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everyone.